Hello everybody, welcome to another video, I hope you're all well. So you may have known for a while that I've been wanting to do a video on the suffragettes, so here I am. First little disclaimer, I am by no means shape or form an expert, I'm just someone that likes to read and to kind of explore um, the suffragette movement, so be gentle with me, okay, I, I'm not an expert, I, I'm not going to go into any great detail, this is just a bit of fun, so I hope you enjoy it. So, you want to be a suffragette, do you? Well, I need to ask you a few questions first, just to make sure that you're as hardcore believer as I am. So, question one. Are you a patient person? There had been this kind of idea of women wanting change kind of bubbling under the surface for centuries. And finally, in 1867, the National Society for the Women's Suffrage was formed. And then later, also influential, was the National Union of Women's Suffrage Society. That is such a mouthful. They were both very influential, but Emmeline Pankhurst, her daughters, and some others thought that it needed a bit more progression to be done a lot faster. So, in 1903, the WSPU, the Women's Social and Political Union, was formed. Um, and their motto was deeds, not words. So it was about direct action and making sure that things were progressing a lot faster. Question two, are you willing to go against your fellow man and woman? So no surprise that the WSPU faced um, a lot of anguish, a lot of it from men, but also from women as well. Not all women were supporters of female suffrage and the right to vote. Not all women were. Um, which must have felt quite weird. The WSPU itself was female only members. Men support could support the suffrage movement, but of course they weren't members. And a lot of women still were adverse to it. So it must have felt weird if you were part of the WSPU or any other union and you were like, but why aren't they wanting the change? Be prepared. Question three, are you willing to be violent if necessary? As the motto says, deeds, not words. And actually, when the union started for a couple of years, it was actually quite peaceful, just going about their business. But then, um, Christabel Pankhurst, um, one of Emmeline's daughters, and Anne Kenny interrupted a political meeting in early 1900s, about 1905-ish. Um, they went to ask two politicians. One was Sir Edward Grey, the other was Winston Churchill. And they went and they asked them, do you think women should have the right to vote? Neither of them answered. Therefore, the women got out this big banner that said, vote for women, and they shouted, answer our questions. Uh, they got kicked out, they got arrested, they refused to pay their fine, uh, therefore they got put into prison. They thought it was better for them to get put in prison and show the injustice of society. Um, after that, violence started to erupt. There was things like the vandalisation of Oxford Street. It's alleged that the windows in the street were smashed. Um, they chained themselves to Buckingham Palace because they thought that the royalty didn't support women's suffrage. They hired boats out and as Parliament was sat down they, they went along the Thames and they were shouting abuse at them. Some refused to pay their taxes, um, others vandalised golf courses, and then some even went as far as attacking politicians when they're on their way to work. It did get quite violent. Obviously not all of the women were doing this, this was just some extremists. Question four. Are you willing to go to prison? So if you're committing these kind of violent acts, you've got to be prepared to have a backlash against you. Prison. Um, prison was horrible. Uh, you've got to think in the early 20th century it's not going to be very nice. Um, but the women that went in there, they didn't actually think of themselves as criminals. They thought of themselves as kind of political prisoners. Um, it highlighted the injustice in the system and of course it reflected very badly on the government. Next question. Are you willing to go on hunger strike? Risk starvation? In prison, because they thought of themselves as political prisoners, so to speak, they were force fed because they went on hunger strike. Um, this looked cruel, it was undignified, it was unjust, it was disgusting. If you type it into Google, there's loads of images that you can find. It was horrendous. It reflected extremely bad on the government. And so, 
an act called Prisoners Temporary Discharge for Ill Health Act of 1913 was put into place, informally known as the Cat and Mouse Act. So what would happen is a woman would come in, she'd go on hunger strike, she'd end up quite close to death, so she was released from prison. Once she was recovered, they would then re-arrest her and the process would then all start again. Whew. The reason why the act came into place is because the government didn't want a martyr to be created. They didn't want a martyr for the suffragette cause. Next question. So you're willing to go on hunger strike, okay, but are you actually willing to die for the cause? Of course there is this very famous death we have within the suffragette movement. Emily Wilding Davison uh, was a woman who joined the WSPU in 1906. She gave up her full-time occupation, I believe she was a teacher. Um, she gave that up, became a full-time suffragette. She was imprisoned many times, many times for many different things. And she was extremely hardcore, she was very hardcore suffragette. Um, and on the 4th of June 1913 she went to Epsom Derby where the King's Horse was racing and she ran out onto the horse track thing where she, in front of the King's Horse where she got trampled on. She died four days later on the 8th of June 1913 due to her injuries and the martyrdom that the government wanted to avoid occurred and her death became a worldwide sensation almost. It was such a shame. Her intentions were unknown, but her um, return train ticket was found in her bag. But it wasn't just that death that kind of changed things for the suffragette movement. There was also a day called Black Friday. Now Black Friday in modern society is kind of known, particularly in America, for the time where you can buy really cheap TVs. It wasn't in 1910. On the 18th of November 1910, the WSPU, they came together um, and they came for a women's parliament that they called uh, 300 women. And they called this because they had just found out that the Prime Minister was very hostile towards the suffragette movement um, and women's right to vote. So they wanted to act upon it and do something. They got an onslaught of police officers. They were kicked, punched, uh, just assaulted physically. There are also a lots of complaints of sexual assault. They had their breasts twisted. They were, had hands going up their skirts and they were groped. It was disgusting, it was undignified and it went on for hours. There were many famous suffragette women there such as Susan B. Anthony and Ada Wright. Um, there is a picture that was published by the Daily Mirror and the government tried to stop it from from being sold and it's of a woman and she's really like huddled round hand over her head trying to stop the policeman who's like towering over her from causing any more damage. From that day about 190 suffragettes were arrested. Two at least died from their injuries, which is disgusting. So it wasn't the first, so Emily Wilding Davison's death wasn't the first one. It was a massive one, um, but people had died for the cause previously. Question seven. You may be required to stand down if required. Would you do that? In 1914, Great Britain went to war. It was the Great War, it was, horrendous, horrific, but the suffragette movement desist in their kind of day-to-day -day suffragette life and they went and they did their duty, they went and they helped out as best as they can. This actually worked out quite well for them because it gave the public perception of women being the weaker sex, it, it kind of kind of backfired on public perception really because women were doing just as good job as, as men um, they were helping out they become nurses they would they would go out into the fields if they had to they'll go into munitions in fact they'll do whatever was needed and that gained a lot of respect for them. question eight fast forward to 1918 are you over the age of 30 
So in February 1918, the Representation of the People Act changed and men over the age of 21 could vote and women over the age of 30 who were property occupiers or were married to property occupiers had the right to vote. That meant about, I believe it's about 8 million women had the right to vote, which was a massive success. Congratulations. Fast forward to 1928. In 1928, a couple of extraordinary things happened. First of all, Pankhurst, one of the founders of the WSPU, died on the 14th of June. A few days later, the Equal Franchise Act passed, gave, giving women the right to vote equal to men. So women, if you're 21 years or over, regardless of property occupying or ownership or anything like that, regardless of that, you had the right to vote. Yay. I often think what Emmeline Pankhurst, uh, Sylvia, uh, Christabel and all the other suffragettes would have actually made of our society today. Since their death, obviously, we've had a time where we've had a woman monarch and a woman prime minister at the same time. We've had so many different things. Women that are so courageous and making a huge impact on society. I wonder what they would reflect. So that's it, that's a very long video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. As I said, I am by no means shape or form an expert, so I've probably got a few things wrong. Um, please don't hate me. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you like this type of video, let me know and I can do more in the future. If you don't, then I'll promise I'll never do it again. <laughs> let me know what you thought in the comment section down below and I shall see you soon for my next video. Bye.